friends, family, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is Marlene with Building Zion, and uh, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. Um, so, this is something very different that I'm doing. I've, I've come on a couple times before to my church to talk about some different gospel doctrine topics, but this is a completely different topic, which, um, first before I continue... <laughs> you see me looking off in that direction, it's because I'm looking at myself. I try to look at the camera and not at myself. <laughs> um, but, so, along with continuing to do the Gospel Doctrine videos that I have been doing, I'm going to start doing also some videos built around cooking with food storage. Because I keep hearing too often people who, they've got there in the background. <laughs> We've got pretty much the, uh, the church food storage and uh, have no idea what to do with it. Um, and, and frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit there too. I'm not, I cook, I'm not a super baker. And so knowing what to do with some of these things um, is a little bit difficult. And you worry that a lot of it's just going to go to waste. And so what do we do with it so that it doesn't go to waste? And how do we actually live off of this? Is, if this is what you've got, if you just went and got all the church food storage stuff, and that's what you've got, then, you know, how, how do you live off of that? And so the stuff that is at the church, the LDS church food storage right now that you can order online, and there are things that you can currently order, not that maybe you could in the past or that you could go to the storehouse and pick up the things that are currently there. They are apple slices, carrots, instant potatoes, chopped onions, white flour, hard red wheat, hard white wheat, regular rolled oats, quick oats, rice, macaroni, spaghetti bites, pinto beans, black beans, white beans, sugar, and non-fat dry milk. So that's not a lot to just live off of. I am going to be adding three extra ingredients to that list of things. One is obviously water, <laughs> duh. Um, the other one is iodized salt. You have to have salt in your diet, particularly iodized, to even survive, to function. And of course, for you know adding flavor. But you have to add that to your, your food storage. And then the other one I'm going to add is olive oil. And you have to have all of, I mean, you have to have some kind of fat in your diet as well. And the church food storage, um, with the exception of maybe the dry milk, which is also non fat dry milk, there's just next to no fat in the food storage. And you have to have some sort of fat in order to, for your body to function properly. So I'm going to add olive oil also because it's nutrient dense um, oil. Coconut oil is another good one. Try to avoid ones like canola oil or vegetable oil because they're just not very good for you. I mean, if that's what you have, that's what you have. But try to get something that is a healthier nutrient dense oil. Plus, olive oil is great for using um, as a moisturizer. So, so is coconut oil. Okay, so um, I'm going to push pause on this. We're going to be doing a lot of pausing and unpausing, so here we go, pause. All right, so the first thing that I thought we would make is learning what do we do. We have the, the flour, but there's no yeast. There's no baking soda, no baking powder. How do we make bread with this flour? What do we do with the flour? So I thought I would um, show you a couple different ways that you can make bread or bread type things without using yeast. Although I'm going to experiment with making natural yeast with just like these things and see how it turns out. Maybe we can figure out how to make some yeast. Um, and who knows, maybe you guys already know all this and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is obvious. But um, so the first, so I thought I would show you how to make crepes and also how to just make like a flatbread. 
So I'm going to pause, I'm going to put my things together to cook, and we'll start with making the crepes first. Okay, I'm back. Um, so now, some of you might be saying, wait a minute, don't you need eggs to make crepes? And the answer is no. Um, a lot of people use them, but it's not necessary. I served my mission in Uruguay, and they're very... Um, especially Italian, but very European, and they ate a lot of crepes. Very good, a lot of crepes with uh, dulce de leche. And they didn't use any eggs in their crepes. It had just basically three ingredients. Flour, water or milk, and salt, or like savory dishes if you wanted things that had like, um, like they would do spinach or creamed corn, some kind of meat in it, they would do that. It was just a, a, a salty kind of crepe. If it was something that was sweet, they were going to put like dulce de leche or, or um, strawberries, then they would add some sugar. So we'll do the, the sweet variation. The first thing you need to do, sorry, my counter space is not big enough that the camera, I guess, I don't know if I can put the camera down. <gasps> Look at that, I can. Look at me learning new things. <laughs> this is the first time I'm using this. So you need three, how many? Oh, two cups of flour. So we'll do that first. So two cups of flour. And then it says whisk together flour, salt, and sugar if desired. So your dry ingredients. Two cups of flour, and then a half of a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. of sugar. Oh man, can you see this? See this sugar right here in this can? It's from 1999. And it even has the oxygen absorber in it. But it is it's getting hard. I think it's still usable, but uh, so you can see it does start to go at some point. All right, hopefully we can salvage enough of this. You have to get another spoon. Okay. Just so you know, I'm not a super precise like measurer. Most of the time I don't even follow recipes. I just like eyeball stuff. So this is learning experience for everybody. Alright. Whisking together. Okay. And that says gradually pour in milk or water. I'm just going to use water. And you need about three cups of water. There we go. Probably going to turn this ball of gooey dough. We made these all the time on my mission, but it's been years and years. Let's see. I got back from my mission in 2004. So is that like 18 years ago? Holy cow. I love to have dulce de leche on these. Their dulce de leche there is like, like real dulce de leche. They get, um, they get sweetened condensed milk and then cook it in a, um, it's like a double boiler. They call it a baño de maria, a maria bath. And, um, and it is amazing. I can't really do a whole lot of dairy stuff though, so. Okay, you. 
a lot of it, but it was so good. Okay, one more cup. I'm just going to do half, that way, because I don't want it to get too watery. I want to make sure the consistency is right. Yeah, see that's pretty watery, so I don't even think I need the other half. You can see, like, it's just kind of runny and soupy. I don't want it to, I mean, yeah, it needs to be runny and soupy, but not too watery. Okay, so I'm going to pause again. I'm going to kind of move all of this over to the stove so that we can actually cook something. So I forgot, before we actually cook it, you need to let the batter just sit out on the counter. Let's see, I have my instructions here. Yeah, let batter stand at room temperature until slightly bubbly on top for 15 to 20 minutes. So we're just gonna sit here and wait for 15 to 20 minutes while I tell you all kinds of stories. And then we'll go back over and actually, no, not really, I'm gonna pause the video. <laughs> Probably take my dogs out on a walk. <laughs> um, and then when we come back, then we will actually make them. All right, see you soon. Okay. So, put some of the batter in here so this is hot enough. Put some of the batter in here and then roll it around. I don't think I can hardly any more. Roll it around. <laughs> roll it around. <laughs> so it looks like I probably need about a half a cup of batter. <laughs> to make it enough. All right, let me let it cook. And it, you want it to cook so that it starts to look dry on top. And that's how you know that it's time to flip it. And then we'll just flip it out of here. There we go. Ooh. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, there we go. bubbly and it gets all dry looking on top. Like I said, I'm going to let it cook for just a little bit longer. So yes, there are three dogs in this house. I'm going to tip this back up. So we have three dogs in this house. One is named Cooper, the other one is Minnie. Um, Minnie is a shift, is a, what is she? She's Maltese, Cooper is a Shih Tzu. And then there is Charles and he is a Maltese. daughter standing behind the camera and she's telling me, shh, are you sure you don't want to come say hi? You want to eat? She's hungry. <laughs> I know, I'm embarrassing her. There she is. Hi. <laughs> there she is. Get something to eat. I don't know. Next, I think what I'm going to do is try adding some oil to the pan to see if it uh, helps with the cooking and flipping. So we're going to put this on pause and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I think we got something going. So I put some oil in the pan and this one, it came out a lot nicer. The edges are a little bit crispy, which is not a traditional crepe. But that's pretty good. The next one um, came out nicer as well. So we need to make sure that it's on medium heat. You may be using just a very light, light, light amount of oil, waiting till it's dry. 
and also when the edges start curling up. I'll show you what the edges look like. Um, when they start curling up, I'll put the camera back down so you can see. Another minute here. Oh, let's see. I don't know if you can see. See like the edges there. They're just starting to curl up. You can see right here. Right there, they're curling up. So let it be on this a little bit longer. Let me check. Still sticking too much. Okay, so now you can see I think this one came out pretty good. It's nice and brown on that side. Ouch, 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 it's hot. But I think we made a good crepe. So what I need to do is make some more crepes. And I think we're gonna save the flatbread for another time because we're already we're already getting up there in time. We're gonna make um, the flatbread another time. And I'm gonna make all these crepes and then I'm gonna come back we've made a bunch of crepes and I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do with them to actually make them a meal because like what do you do with crepes okay we're sitting around eating crepes how do we then use all that food storage to actually make a meal with them so we'll do that I'll do that next show you making and I'll probably release both videos at the same time so you can see making the crepes and then what to do with them or maybe I'll cut this one down and splice them all together we'll see anyways um Thanks for joining me, um, and have a great day. Bye, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Marlene from Building Zion. Welcome back. This is part two of using the LDS Church food storage to make crepes and what to do with the crepes. So we're going to make a dessert and um, a meal in this portion of the video. And I'll have to see. I might, as I... Put them all together i might be able to put them all into one video so it's not two videos but we'll see how it goes um any recipes also i forgot to mention last time any recipes that i use i will include down in the description and then i will also post the recipes over on my blog which is um building zion lds blogspot.com so you can go over there the recipes will be there as well um, I think there's anything else I wanted to share. Um, yeah, so just a quick rundown from before that um, what I am doing, what we are doing here, is learning how to cook using the LDS church food storage, and, and that's it. Um, I've seen other cooking shows, videos, where they say they're using LDS church food storage, but then they use like all these tons of other things. And the problem is, we're, those who have bought a bunch of that food storage and haven't really thought about other food storage, they're sitting here with all this food storage from the storehouse and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I don't know how to cook with this. And a lot of us don't know how to cook like, like, like our parents used to. I know my mom showed me a lot of things, but, um, but honestly, like, cooking from scratch, I don't do a whole lot of it. So there's just a lot that I don't know that I need to learn so that I can use that stuff. Now we do have other stuff in our food storage, but I know me, we'd end up using that other stuff and all this stuff would just sit around in the boxes until it's 20 years old and then it just needs to be thrown out. So um, the only other things I'm going to be using are um, olive oil because you've got to have some kind of oil in your diet and then course water <laughs> and then iodized salt you got to make sure it's iodized you need the iodine in your salt um, in your diet you've got to have iodine in your diet too to be healthy so we're adding those so what we're doing today we made the crepes last time and I made some more after I turned the video off I made some more and um, so now we're gonna be making a dessert and a meal and and again, it's all just from the things in the in the food storage. So I have over here, last night, before I went to bed, I put some black beans in the fridge to soak them in water. You can see they're like coming over the top because they expanded. 
they absorbed all that water. So when we put them on to cook, they will cook much faster than if I had just put them on dry out of the can or out of the bag. Yeah, it's out of the can. And then these are the the apple slices. Let me see. Oh yeah. So this is what the dehydrated apple slices look like. And they're very, they're kind of malleable. They're kind of chewy. Uh, kind of a snack, but they're kind of stale tasting. But if that's what you've got, that's what you've got. You're going to love stale, stale tasting um, apples. So here I soaked these ones overnight. You could probably actually even just soak them for an hour or two and they'd be fine. And, um, and then we're going to use these in making our dessert. So, um, so I'm going to pause again, set up a couple things so that you're not just watching me run around my kitchen <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. So I moved us over to the stove here and I have here, I will tip the camera down. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have here a pot that I have about two-thirds full, and we're going to put our soaked black beans in there. Yep. And then, oh, can't you see any little, oh, that's not a float, I thought it was a piece of dirt. Okay, so we put those in there, and then a little cooking tip, if you do happen to have uh, like white vinegar. I don't think I have any in my cupboard. If you happen to have white vinegar, then you can put that some white vinegar in there and that will help the beans cook faster. So that might be, um, that might be one thing that you can think of whenever you're thinking of what to supplement into your food storage. You could say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, white vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Just like yesterday, if you want eggs in your crepes, you're going to want to have supplements with powdered eggs. So I'm just going to use some iodized salt and sprinkle some in there. Of course, that helps with flavor. But it also will lower the cooking temperature of the beans. Well, it'll lower the boiling point, which will raise the cooking temperature, which means they will cook faster. So we want to cover them, and I'll just put them on the back burner here for now on high. And when they start boiling vigorously, then we'll turn the, the fire down. Okay, so now we have our beans going, and we're going to start working on our dessert. So we want to take, I have in this bowl, there's a cup of sugar, and then I just put one tablespoon of olive oil. And mix that around really good and it'll start to have kind of almost like a like a loose cookie dough like this sugar will just start to look kind of sticky all over and then take some of the juice that's on these apples pour that in there mix that in there to medium heat. You have to be really, really careful with sugar when you're, essentially we're going to be like caramelizing it. You have to be really careful because it will burn really easily and really, really fast. So you don't want the heat too high. You've got to watch it and stir it as it's going. Okay. So, so while this is heating, uh, let me see, oh, I need to grab another plate real quick. So this is to put our crepe on for the, 
We'll just go ahead and do it now. We'll take some of the apple here. I'll put it in a little corner. Try to drain off as much juice as you can. Put it in a little corner, like so. And then you just like to fold it over like that. Like a little pocket. Okay, just put that there. I'm gonna do maybe I'll make three of them like that. Three that are all ready to go. So I'm not um, being concerned about any sugar burning as I'm trying to make these. Just have them ready. I'm stirring it here and there's like little tiny bubbles starting to form, which means it's pretty much ready. If we keep going, it's going to burn. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the heat off because there's still enough heat coming off of this, off that burner to keep it warm so it doesn't, um, doesn't cool. And then we're going to put our, our crepe in there. I want to bathe it. It in the sauce. Like that. Like so. And we've got another spoon here. Yeah, see I can still I can tell there's enough heat because there's still oh, there's still little bubbles kind of bubbling up around here. I don't know if you can if you can see it. It's kind of kind of simmering on the corners there. So Leave it around, and then we want to take it off and put it over here on the plate. Okay, our beans, they are boiling rapidly, so we need to turn the heat down. I'm going to put it down maybe on like a six, like just above medium. Let some of the pressure off. Stir it a little bit. Maybe even turn it down more, like to four, like right below medium. And, uh, and then if I need to turn it back up, I can. But we don't want it to scald on the bottom. We don't want the beans to stick to the bottom. We want to stir them sometimes. lid back on and observe how they are. If it seems like they're not boiling enough, turn it back up a little bit. If it seems like they're starting to boil again too much, then turn the heat back down a little bit. Okay, so now I think these have cooled enough that we can taste them and see how they came out. But I need a fork, so give me just a sec. Have any clean forks in my drawer. <laughs> so I'm gonna pause it and wash a fork. And I'm back. Clean fork. Okay. So here we are. We have our, our crepes. They look good at any rate. So we'll see how they turn out. So I guess this could be like a dessert or a breakfast. Let's see what they taste like. Work. Okay. Here we go. So <laughs> Crepe is good. The texture of the crepe is really good. The sauce is pretty good. A nice sweet flavor. I can just barely taste with like a slight burned flavor, but it's very very subtle. It's not like oh, I'm burned, <laughs> which can happen really fast with doing this. So it's very very slight. So maybe if I 
did it a little faster. Maybe even the first one I did wouldn't have that, but then by the last one, it maybe kind of got a little bit. Um, and the apples, um, of course, they're not as good as fresh apples. And I still have kind of that little bit of that canned stale flavor, but it's not bad. Especially when you mix it with the crepe and the sauce, it's not like it super stands out. It kind of just blends together. I do like one more bite just to make sure. Yeah. So with the sauce and the crepe, I can't really detect very strongly the stale flavor. When I just eat them apples separately, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so they're like canned <laughs> stale apples. Um, so yeah, I would say as far as a breakfast, it tastes more like a breakfast. It kind of tastes like a maple syrup, actually, the sauce. So, but it could be a dessert, but I'd say I'd do it. I'd eat it. So I'd say that one was a success. Okay. So now I'm going to pause the video again. These beans have to finish. When the beans finish, um, then we can start making the meal, the meal part of it. Okay? Okay, so the beans are done. And what's amazing is they're done after only one hour of cooking. It's because we soak them ahead of time. When you don't soak them, it can take like, like four or five hours to cook. So especially if you're in a situation where you have to conserve energy or cooking for cooking, you know, if you're doing like a propane stove or something, you want to soak your beans ahead of time. So you're not spending like four or five hours worth of propane cooking beans. Okay, so the beans, I still have them going. Um, let me point this down. Okay, I have here the um, dehydrated onions and dehydrated carrots. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take this lid off, we'll take a quarter cup of the carrots, maybe kind of a, a heaping quarter cup, and put it in with the, the beans. You know what, now that I look at it, we want it to be a half a cup. I'm definitely kind of an eyeballer when it comes to things. So a half a cup of carrots we're going to put in there. And then because they're dehydrated, we want to continue to cook and boil because those will they'll swell and uh, get softened. And then the onions, we only want to do maybe like about a, an eighth of a cup a little bit more, not quite a quarter cup. We don't want there to be like two onions. Unless you're a super onion fan, then you might put some more, a little bit more. So I'd say anywhere from a quarter or an eighth to a quarter cup, just depending on how many onions that you like. Some people are like, oh no. So these onions, when I first opened this can, Woo! They smell super strong. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I wanted to get a lid put on those as soon as possible, and then I lit a candle. But um, they're, they're actually really good. They're really crispy. They're really good onions. Um, they would be really good if you wanted to use them as like a salad topper, or if you wanted to sprinkle them on... Um, you know, like that green bean casserole thing that, that you make at, uh, at Thanksgiving time. Like sprinkle those on there if you don't have the, like those French onion things. Those would actually be really good on there. Okay, so I put the lid back on the beans. And I'm going to let that get boiling again. Let it boil for a little bit to make sure the, the onions and the, um, the carrots are soft. And then one more thing. Here it is. We need to make sure and add salt, otherwise it's just going to be gross. So this is going to be, I'm just going to 
sprinkle some on there. Let's see, just like just like this, sprinkle some on there around the top. You can stir it. And then I would let that cook a little bit more. Come back in just a few minutes and taste it to see if it has enough salt. And then add some more if you need. But uh, we'll be back in a few minutes after that has simmered a little bit more. Okay, the beans are ready. I did add some more salt because uh, I'm a little glam, so I add more salt to taste. Um, when they're done, you want to drain the juice off of the bean juice off. I, I just let it go down the drain, but if you are truly in a, a famine situation or something like that, you will want to save that bean juice for some kind of a soup or something later. There's a lot of nutrient in that, so don't just throw it away. Okay, so let's put this down again. Okay, so you can see here, here's the, the bean mixture. It has the beans, the onions, salt, and the carrots. And then we're going to take our crepe. And just like you would with like uh, rolling enchiladas, we're going to put some of the bean mixture in the middle. Roll it up. it over here. I have a, can you see me? I have a pan lined with aluminum foil. And we'll, we'll line them all up. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish that, line them all up, and we're going to come back and then I'm going to show you how to make a sauce to pull, pour over the top of them to um, make it yummy. Okay, so we have all of our Crepes here and bean mixture looking super nice, super yummy, but we need a sauce on them to make them, as as my daughter would say, muy deli deli. That's deli deli. Okay. So, you're going to want to get, I have one of these like shake bottles. You don't have to have one of these. You can have like a mason jar. And you're going to put, so this is the the Bishop Storehouse or the church food storage. I guess it's not Bishop Storehouse. It's the church, church food storage milk. And let's see, it says on the can that you put, add three quarter cup of nonfat milk to one quart of warm water in this well. And well, it looks like that's a quart. It looks like my family has already attacked it, so it must not be that bad tasting. If they've already eaten half, drinking half of it. But, I'm going to fill, go ahead and fill this cup up mostly. And then, so what we're making, it's called a white sauce. This was a, another thing that I learned how to make in Colombia. Uh, I'm sorry, not Colombia, that's where my daughter is from. No, this is Uruguay. In Uruguay, they would make this white sauce along with the crepes, like how I showed you. And um, for people, a lot of people were very poor in Uruguay, and so they made um, a lot of things that they did were kind of poor man food renditions. So, so this right here is the milk. With, and I put just a tablespoon of flour. And I'm going to shake it up really good. Oops. Shake, shake, shake. And I'm going to make this white sauce to put on our crepes. I'm going to make sure that the flour is all dissolved. To our pan. If when you pour it out you see lumps, then you want to put it back in the cup and shake it again because otherwise your, uh, your sauce is going to be weird and lumpy. Okay, so then get your, your fire going. Let's go ahead and 
go ahead and sprinkle some salt in there. So it's probably smart if you have like a whisk that isn't a wire whisk, a plastic one. I'm not very smart because I'm going to ruin my pan doing this. So I need to get myself a plastic whisk so I can whisk stuff in this pan. But it's going to have to do for now. So this is going to take a second to get going. I will pause it and be back when it is actually starting to uh, thicken. Okay, so it's getting close now. When it starts warming, you want to really start stirring it continually because you don't want the milk to scald. Scalding means that um, a layer on the bottom will like start to stick to the pan and burn. And then you just want to stir it continually, vigorously, until you can see, oh, it starts boiling. Oh man, and that went fast. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to turn it down to medium heat. it back on if you want it to boil just a little bit longer, like rapidly boil just a little bit longer. There it goes, that's going to bubble over again. And you'll want to taste it on your own to see if there's enough salt, salt to taste. That's why I'm not going to say, you know, add like, a, you know, an eighth of a teaspoon or whatever. You're going to need to salt it to taste. I know some people really like a lot of salt and some people would almost rather there was no salt. Okay. I think that has on enough. I'm going to turn the fire off. And then I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit to make sure it thickens. As it, as it cools, you'll actually be able to see that it is thickening. And, um, you know, if something went wrong, <laughs> it won't thicken as it cools. So I'm going to pause it and I'm going to see how it thickens as it cools. Okay, so this is starting to cool some. And you can see how getting it's kind of thickening it's not super super soupy I think you can see how it kind of it's kind of a cream um, so I had to go back and actually I poured all this back into my bottle and I added another tablespoon of flour because it just wasn't thick enough so you need about a tablespoon of flour to a cup of milk. So we use two cups of milk plus two tablespoons of flour. Okay, and then we do a little taste test here. Yep, that's pretty much white sauce. Um, it does taste like flour and salt and milk. <laughs> you can really taste, like, pull out the flavors. It tastes like, especially because it's the powdered milk, like the powdered milk flavor has is a little bit stronger. So, let's see, I'll use this right here. We're going to pour this over the top of our crepes, like so. Oh, it might be helpful if you could see me, right? <laughs> Okay, there we go. It's all nice and, I mean, it looks 
It looks good. Let's see. I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't even know how this is going to taste. This is me experimenting and learning um, just as much as you are. Serve some out here. And we're going to give it a try. this fork over here. All right. Let's see how it turned out. Not bad. It's not like my favorite. The onion flavor is a little strong. So I might put a little less onions in it. Um, the white sauce does like help a lot. I put a little bit more of that sauce on there. Try another bite here. for a meal. Um, like I said, I think the thing that like really kicks me in the face <laughs> is the onion. So some onion would be good, but maybe just a little less. I wish I could <laughs> give you a bite <laughs> so you could try it and be like, eh. oh, it's better than I don't. But anyways, okay. So we made crepes. We made our first meal. Some crepe crepes with black beans and white sauce, and we made our first dessert slash breakfast with apples and, and caramel sugar, so I hope this was helpful, educational, fun, whatever you want to call it, and um, like I said, I will have the recipes down in the description, and they will also be at my blog, which I will link that, um, the link to my blog also in the description as well. So... We'll see you next time, whether it's for a Gospel Doctrine video or for another cooking video. So, have a great day, guys. Bye.